Manufacturing is at the heart of our long-term economic vision. So said the business secretary today as he launched a new campaign to make it in Great Britain. Our business correspondent Sarah Smith has been taking her own look at the manufacturing sector. In today's special report, she's met the high-tech innovators who hope to build the great industrial companies of tomorrow. Not to mention Britain's oldest manufacturer, which made Big Ben. I've just moved house, and in the process I've discovered it's not possible to fill your home entirely with things that were made in Britain. That's one reason why people say we need to manufacture much more in this country. But rebalancing the British economy isn't just about producing things we'd put in our kitchens. What if I wanted to find a British car? There aren't any big UK-owned car manufacturers anymore, but we do build well over a million a year here. And we could be at the cutting edge with eco-friendly electric cars. It's easy to make a car like this look good on the racetrack, but to prove that the technology really is durable, this actual vehicle is driven all the way from northern Alaska to the very southern tip of Argentina. But it is a longer journey from the track to the production line. And Britain's not always the best place to put your ideas into practice. I think it's a fantastic place to, to invent, hence I actually came over here from Switzerland. It's, it's, it's great and also the history of, of invention in this country. It gets more tri difficult the more further you go towards uh, the production line um, and the whole area of manufacturing. Would it be easier in other countries to take an idea and get it into mass market manufacture? I think there are countries where it's easier, where you've got investors who see a potential and then are willing to bet a much larger amount of money Seven, eight, to put one. this invention into mass production, where we have a bit of a, a more cautious approach here. The revolutionary invention inside this car, an axial flux electric engine, has been picked up by Britain's largest vehicle parts manufacturer, GKN. So it is one step closer to mass production, if a car maker decides to buy it. This motorbike has a lot further to go. The quiet hum of the battery-powered engine won't thrill serious petrol heads, but its speeds might. At over 180 miles an hour, it's one of the fastest electric bikes in the world. The design is so clever, it's already been targeted by industrial spies. This technology may well be stolen by foreign competitors long before any British entrepreneur comes up with the tens of millions of pounds required to turn this into a commercial prospect. There's lots of people looking, taking photos, wanting to know what we're doing, who you know uh, are doing it as a fact-gathering mission to go back to their home country to look at essentially mimicking, uh, copying what, what is being done in, in the UK. Some famous British inventions do make it to manufacture here. But Dyson have now moved all their production overseas. So yet again, what was designed in Britain isn't being made in Britain. And a lot of what we do make is for foreign firms with UK factories. A large water coolant generator is not the kind of thing any of us need at home. But it is the kind of thing Britain is very good at manufacturing. The German firm Siemens are building this piece of precision engineering in Wales. And they say they would make much more here if only we produced enough engineers to build them. We're simply not getting enough people through with the right skills to take them on for the, the growth that we would hope to achieve uh, going forwards. So you could be creating more jobs here if you could find the right people to give those jobs to? It's an issue across the UK. We're struggling um, to get people with the right skills that we can use uh, in those manufacturing locations. One of the biggest problems is the engineering graduates who don't want to get their hands dirty. Many of them take their math skills to the city to try and make their fortune. That's sort of the uh, attraction to in the, in working in the city. Um, you see these big, big salaries and uh, they uh, sort of rope you in and then uh, uh, maybe it's not, not something you had considered but, uh, when you started your degree, but once you finish it, yeah, yeah, they do, it, does, it is very attractive. Yeah. Nobody's arguing to bring back dirty, menial, low-paid manufacturing jobs to Britain and it wouldn't make any economic sense to do so anyway. The future's got to be high-tech, high-skilled factories like this. But even here, they say one of their biggest difficulties is the image problem manufacturing has in Britain. Put simply, not very many people want to work like this anymore. In the Whitechapel Bell Foundry, working practices have not changed much since they cast the bells for Westminster Abbey over 400 years ago. It's the oldest manufacturing company in Britain 
and today they still pour molten bronze into sand moulds to make small handbells and huge church bells. When you've been in business since Elizabethan times, you can get a bit cynical about government talk of a manufacturing renaissance. In England, we're not really celebrated at all. We're sort of regarded as little better, I think, than a dirty nuisance. And, um, and certainly I don't sense working here in the East End of London that we are either celebrated by our local authority or indeed by, by the national government. We are here, they accept that we're here, but I don't sense that they are in any sense behind us or for us or supporting us. We're just here. The Bell Foundry plays to our more romantic notions about traditional British manufacturing. But if we are going to move our modern economy away from financial services and start making more in this country, it probably won't be in places like this. And it probably isn't going to happen unless all of us, from government to young graduates, reassess our ideas about what manufacturing really means to Britain. Deeply traditional or totally high-tech, manufacturers know what they need better access to credit, a skilled, educated workforce, and they'd like it to be easier to hire and to fire their staff. They hear politicians trying to strike the right note as they talk about rebuilding British manufacturing. They say they're still waiting for some real cast-iron guarantees. Sarah Smith, ringing the changes 